Welcome to trying to learn Valorant as a new player. We're starting here with a little warm-up, uh, aka headshotting bots, in order to, you know, figure out how to click on heads. Now, uh, I did this for a little bit of time until I started feeling comfortable, and by that I mean I got bored a minute or two later. After that, we moved on to attempting to learn a little thing called dead zoning. You see the movement error graph on the top right hand side of the screen. Essentially it's shooting without those giant blue bars appearing there. Uh, this was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. So I practiced it for a couple of minutes until I started being a little bit more consistent. The video footage you're seeing now is actually after I felt a little bit more consistent and you could still see the blue bars. Uh, popping up here. Now, this training, I'll probably be referencing it again later on, because I think this is one of my biggest weaknesses when I tried to actually move on to death matches. Now, these first couple death matches that I decided to load into, they were pretty rough. Uh, basically, I didn't really know the maps, so I didn't know where to look to see people. I did try to watch some educational content uh, before trying to learn the game, uh, where they talk about, you know, plate movement, uh, crosshair placement, uh, you know, pre-aiming, slicing the pie, all these fancy terms. And basically what I realized is you need map awareness. Okay, so that's probably, you know, my biggest weakness other than my aim, other than my movement error, all these other things. But map awareness will come with time, I think. And as I played these games, it did start to get easier and easier. You know, I made a couple good plays. It wasn't all horrible, uh, but it was kind of rough. Now, there was a lot of dying, mostly dying. Uh, my KDs weren't the best, but that's not really what I'm trying to learn. What I'm trying to learn is how to murder people, okay? You know, I'm showing some pretty good plays right now where I'm actually, you know, murdering people over and over again. Now, murder is wrong, um, but I think actually what I'm realizing when I went back and watched these back is the first game after I did the little, you know, warm-up slash practice was probably my best, and then as I played Deathmatch, I think I got worse and worse at the game. But that's probably just a consistency thing where I'm getting tilted from dying or something, which is quite unfortunate. So I played three Deathmatches after warming up today, and, you know, I got basically last place in all of them. Seventh place on one of them, that was pretty good. Um, and after that, I ended up accidentally queuing into an actual game when I tried to queue into a deathmatch after taking a break. And, you know, I'll just show you how that went. Spike planted. Last player standing. One enemy remaining. Watch your eyes! Basically, of the three maps I had played in my total lifetime, I got my least favorite one of them because this map has so much like verticality and places to look, you just die out of nowhere. I did end up, you know, getting some kills, okay? Uh, all of my deaths didn't go quite unresponded to, uh, but my team essentially got stomped pretty bad this game, and it was kind of a little bit demotivating, okay? You know, you might be saying, oh, you've only played four total games, this was your first one. Uh, but, you know, I was like, why am I even doing this? As, you know, someone who is just trying to live their life, why go and try to learn this game that's so hard? At least for me, physically, mentally, and emotionally. But I decided, you know what, we're going to push through. So, after this game, I went and did a little research online. And I found uh, some videos by someone who I've already decided to call my lord and savior, uh, Wu Jin. Uh, describing some different kind of, you know, techniques to warm up, some different play styles, you know, focusing on gunfight hygiene and things like this. So I'll have a plan moving forward to actually survive and thrive. So it starts out with a, a warm up technique where you over flick and then you move in the opposite direction that you shot to readjust your cursor, you know, working on your movement and your aim. Uh, without doing, you know, I guess, micro adjustments with the mouse. Why this is important, not really entirely sure, but, you know, the video said to do it, and he said you'll get better at the game, so I decided to listen. So you do that next, you do a little thing under flicking, where essentially it's the same thing, but you aim under the, you under aim, under flick, 
that one I over flicked and had to under flick to uh, do the micro adjustment with movement uh, to hit the shot. Now, these did feel, make me feel like, oh, I'm using my hands and my fingers. One of my biggest problems I'm realizing is I move too much while shooting. When I'm playing actual games, that move, that shooting error chart is just all blue lines, uh, which makes it basically impossible to hit your target. So then even if my poor mouse hair placement, mouse hair, crosshair placement, you know, is over the person's head, my shots are shooting left, right, 50 feet up in the air. And it, and it generates this thing called frustration, which leads to, uh, a recurring cycle of death and murder. Uh, and then after this, we essentially kind of flick, and then whichever way we over or under flick, we adjust using our movement, unless we flick perfectly, which I do every single time. So this drill was basically completely useless to me. After that, uh, there's this little, I don't know what it'd be called, you know, flicking practice where you try to get two bots that are relatively close to each other, and then you flick from one head to the other. That one was a bit farther than it's supposed to be um so that's why i missed it i should also put that i did kind of just copy some like the most common sense i saw high level players using and it turns out that that's pretty hard to get used to so i'm hoping to see a big improvement in a couple days once i adapt now the thing i'm trying to focus on in these death matches isn't you know oh what's my kd oh how am i doing which i'm going to be focusing on anyway but i can try to psychology psychologically ignore it uh but the thing is is you know there's three types of fights there's zero to five meters where you kind of just spray and move because you're so close that you don't want to die you know you don't want to get shot then there's you know five to fifteen meters where you should be doing this kind of move a little bit uh hit shoot two rounds move a little bit shoot two rounds and you want your movement error to not be that big now if you watch all the fights i'm playing the blue bar in the shooting air is essentially always there, which means I'm always moving while I'm shooting, and that makes my shots extremely inaccurate, which leads to situations like these where my bullets are shooting all around the target, uh, which is slightly unfortunate. But, you know, as long as I'm consciously thinking about trying not to do it, hopefully I will get better with time. I think I might incorporate a little bit of dead zoning. That's what it's called when you shoot, uh, you know, in between movements practice into the warm-up because i think that will help a lot as well so i can actually get practice in a you know controlled environment rather than just trying to do it while someone is at actively attempting to murder me now these two fights in my last game were kind of the reason i wanted to practice this because when someone's super far away one i'm struggling to track them with my cursor but that's going to be solved differently but i also just kind of uh have a lot of movement error which I should be able to solve because that's just muscle memory. Those last three games, overall, my placement was a little bit better. I got 8th, 9th, and 7th instead of 9th, 9th, 7th. So active improvement. Play the game, get better. Easy as that. So I decided to also throw some aim training into my practice as well at the end of the day. Uh, just to kind of wind down and also improve my cursor. You know, hopefully get better, used to this low sense and actually... Uh, get some raw aim down. Now I realize that my other problems like dead zoning and uh, map awareness aren't going to really be helped by the aim training, but I think it's going to help me build confidence. So when I did the Voltaic benchmarks, I placed in silver apparently, uh, but I did have a couple of results in iron, okay, the bottom of the bottom, which means I'm going to be kind of practicing using an iron fundamentals playlist at the end of the day, and then maybe I'll retest once a week or something uh, just to you know, see if I can move up to a more intensive training regiment. I also did a playthrough of the Valorant specific benchmarking playlist from Voltaic, and while it was challenging, I did manage to, uh, you know, kill some things. So I think I'll be doing both of these benchmarks just so I can see, you know, where my relative skill level is, uh, because I also placed an iron in several of these, which kind of reinforced my plan of just doing the easiest fundamentals routine and then slowly work my way through those you know if i see some big improvement in numbers on the fundamental routine day to day i'll probably you know retest and or just move up to the next fundamental routine i placed in silver here as well as you can see so hopefully we'll be able to use these numbers to track my raw aim improving and then we can analyze the gameplay uh, to see my game sense and all these other nonsense mumbo jumbo terms people use anyway i appreciate it and i'll see you again tomorrow